Hi guys, it's Archie Luxury. Guys, I want to talk to you about David SW. David SW, David SW. Guys, if you are in America, if you are looking for a Rolex watch of your dreams, in fact, if you're looking for a contemporary modern wristwatch, I strongly advise you to look at David SW. Guys, don't play the dealer games. Don't bring in chocolates or crispy creams for your dealer hoping to get a Rolex at retail. It's futile. Please guys, save your dignity. Keep some pride. Go to David SW. I would highly recommend David SW, David SW. If you're in America and you're looking for a watch, go to David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluto channel. We're doing a paid review. Paid review 22 QC 16. Quick, 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 quick. Wristwatch check. I'm wearing a Rolex Submarina. Okay, let's jump straight in. Hey Arch, call me Laz. I would like a paid review. I've been watching your videos for four years now. It took me a while to understand your it has to hurt philosophy, but now it makes perfect sense. I started loving watches about four years ago when I found my god dad's gold-plated citizen watch. It was a very generic quartz watch that does not work at the moment, but it is by far the most precious item in my collection. My father wore this watch day in day out for approximately eight years. Everywhere he went, he had his small citizen with him. I was 17 when he passed, he was 45. With all the craziness surrounding his passing, the watch got lost in the mix. I then found the watch in 2018 and it and had not seen it since 1999, just before his passing. Holding the watch in my hand was unreal. Best thing I gotta tell you firstly, get the battery out of that sucker. If the battery's there, it can leak very easily. Get, make sure you get the battery out. If you, if it's not functioning, still get the battery out. Okay. Um, holding this watch in my hand was unreal. It felt like I had a small piece of him with me. It brought me such joy and good memories came flooding back. I managed to wear the watch for my wedding. That meant the world to me. And thus my love for watches began. I can only hope that my pieces do for my daughter what my dad's watch did for me. I have t two watch collections. One that I will not bother you with since you know you will tell me to let them all go. And another four pieces that I would like your brutal honest opinion on. Number one, my first watch is my first decent watch. My first decent watch is an Amiga Aquaterra 41mm blue dial with light blue seconds. I bought this watch online from a very nice gentleman for 3200 That's US dollars. It came with a rubber strap and a steel bracelet, also a box and papers. I like the Aquaterra because I can wear it anywhere and it has very good water resistance. It is my go-to watch if I am unsure of which of my pieces to wear. My second watch is a Tudor Black Bay 58 with a black dial. I love how it works like a 50s Submariner. I wanted a diver with more of a vintage feel and a modern movement for reliability. This watch suits the bill perfectly. I purchased this on eBay in very good condition with box and papers for 3300 It still had the sticker on the bracelet, so I don't think it was ever worn before I purchased it. My third acquisition was a watch that I've been researching for about three years. And that is my Black Dial Navitimer AB012. Uh, that doesn't make sense, that number. But anyhow, 41 mil with the in-house movement. I got this from a reputable watch dealer for 4100 This comes with limited papers and no box. I was on the fence between this watch and the Moon watch, but in the end, I like the dial so much better 
on the Navi timer. I had to have it since I am a mathematic mathematician. I was drawn to the numeral conversion you can do on the dial. The basic, the beauty of order, ordered chaos is the best way to explain it. And in June, June, I got my last piece in honor of my upcoming 40th. I managed to get a grail of mine, a new Rolex Yachtmaster 40 with the rhodium dial. I picked this up from an AD in Las Vegas. I live in LA, but I made the drive to Vegas just to pick it up. I could not believe the AD actually called me to let me know that the watch was waiting for me. I paid retail $12,350. I know there are other models that I could have tried to obtain that have a much bigger resale. Well, I don't know whether he would have rung you. Okay, let's be totally honest. Let's not be delusional fantasists here. But I have no intention whatsoever of selling my very first Rolex. And after browsing the internet and the Rolex website, as well as many visits to AD, I mu to ADs, I must say this is my all-time favorite Rolex model. And uh, isn't it lovely how people fall in love with their shit? I've seen your reviews on this piece, and it feels different. I truly love all my watches, and before I pull the trigger on all of them. I tried them on in the boutiques and in stores as per your advice. I grew up fairly poor and come from humble beginnings. I and my wife run a jewel business. I started a tax preparation business and my wife became a real estate broker. We had no clients and no money, but our business has grown better than I had ever hoped for. I worked really hard to obtain my pieces and I feel blessed that I was able to obtain them. Just four years ago, spending 13000 on a watch seemed like crazy talk, yet here I am. Mm. I want to add one or two watches to the collection, but that won't be for quite some time, as I need to take care of other things first. What are your thoughts and any suggestions as to what the final two watches should be? Also, can you give me recommendations for world timers under 10,000 mark? That isn't the large, that isn't that large. I prefer something in 42 mil or below range as I don't have that big of a wrist. Sent you $100, sorry for the long, well, no, the, the story's quite good. I quite like the story here. So what do I think there? Well, congratulations and entered into the watch collecting phase of your life. What can I say there? Um, the Amiga Aquaterra 41 mil blue dial, uh, beautiful watch. I love the Amiga quality. It feels like a good substantial watch. The Aquaterras, they're a little bit, you know, under the radar. They haven't been as popular as I thought they'd be, but oh well, beautiful. Then we've got a Tudor Black Bay 58 with the black dial. Beautiful watch. I think the 41 is a little bit too big. The 58, uh, I got to tell you, that is probably the perfect one to get there. Then you've got the the Navi Timer. Um, great watch. I've owned a Navi Timer. I've owned a few Breitlings. I've got to tell you, I really do think Breitling is a good brand. I do like my Breitlings. And I, I'd almost, you could almost have a collection just Breitlings. You get the Super Ocean Heritage. You'd get that new Super Ocean with the snowflake hands. You'd get a Navi Timer. You'd get, they've got some retro stuff they do. They got some great stuff happening. So nothing, nothing wrong with Breitling. And then you've got your yacht. Every man needs a Rolex. And the Yacht Master, to be totally honest with you, I'm wearing the sub. I think my sub, I love my sub. I think that's a perfect one and done. But i got to be honest with you, the Yacht Master is not a bad watch at all. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? So I don't have problems with any of that stuff. Four nice. You got an Amiga Aquaterra. That's almost a, a casual dress type watch. The Aquaterra. 
The Black Bay is your diver. You got a Navi timer. Sorry, you got a chronograph in your Navi timer, and you got a yachty. Um, so what else would I get there? Interesting choices. Interesting choices. So I got to tell you, what would I get there? So let's have a look there. So I think firstly, what do I think there? Firstly, I'd want to add a Rolex GMT. So you could add, I'd say with your collection, instead of adding a GMT, which is expensive, I'd be adding an Explorer 2. Explorer 2! Yes. I think an Explorer 2. So you've got a Yacht Master and an Explorer 2. They're kind of, kind of left of center, both of those. So that's what I would be doing. And then as a second watch, you want a world time under the $10,000 mark. And what comes to mind is the Omega Aquata Aquaterra, Aquaterra world time. Got a friend of mine who just bought one. Um, yeah, you can get those under $10,000 on the pre-owned market. More like five to seven, six to seven and a half, eight thousand. I reckon that is a beautiful world time. The other great place you could want to look at world timers is have a look at JJ Jager LeCoultre. Jager LeCoultre Master Control. Um, they've, that's a great way I would go. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon the Omega Aquaterra would fit your bill. Um, hmm, that's what I'd, I, I like that. So I got to tell you, it's a great collection. I love the collection. You got a lot of beautiful pieces. And I think that would slot in there. The other thing is, world timers. Look, look, personally, the number one world timer is the Paddock world timer. Expensive. Sometimes in life, you've got to have things that are goals. May not achieve them, but they're there. And that's what you want to do. You want to have some goals. So I would say, you know, the Padex, that's a beautiful world timer. That's probably the best world timer. The other option is, what about a duo reverso? A duo reverso. That's again into that that travel theme there. So I'd really say I'd say bang for buck under ten thousand is the Amiga Aquaterra uh, World Time. I reckon that's the best bang for buck piece there. So great collection. Keep keep going hard and uh, definitely add an X. I'd add an Explorer too. I reckon that'd be a great travel GMT. I'm Archie Luxury. Thanks for watching. Guys, like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Don't be afraid to put some comments. And remember, guys, paid reviews keep me full-time on YouTube. Without paid reviews, it's very hard to survive. Please get a paid review done. 50 US dollars. Details down in the description. And I look forward to doing your paid review. Hi guys, it's Archie Luxury. And today guys, I want to show you a wonderful Instagram channel. That's right, an Instagram channel who's also a great fan of Archie Luxury. Father.time.luxury.watches Father.time.luxury.watches This guy here combines photography <clears throat> with beautiful watches. Have a look here. Look at this. Very, very nice display of watches and uh, just in a great, look at this, his food with watches, his coffee with watches, just great, great photos, great watches and a great lifestyle. Look at this beautiful cigar and you can click on any of these pictures here inside Instagram and see the lifestyle. Look at this. Ah, what a wonderful way to enjoy a cigar. So there you go, guys. Check out father.time.luxury.watches. Father Time Luxury Watches. Check it out, guys. You will love it. 
Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the YouTube sensation, the Paul Pluto channel. Guys, I need you to help me out, guys. I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I need you to request a paid review. 50 US dollars, look down in the description. 50 US dollars, re I will review your collection. I'll tell you what I think of it and I'll give you some pointers. The other thing is, guys, you can sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay a couple bucks a month, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you want. And it keeps me going on YouTube because, guys, I'm in a niche. Nobody can make money out of the views I get. The views are crap because it's a small, specialized area. And I don't talk about garbage for the sake of views. Guys, sponsor me on Patreon. Look down below and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.